we end up having this AEW show that ended with an Impact run-in. They're okay. going to show up on Impact on Tuesday night. There's a work. What is going on here? Well, first, Sting came back. We'll talk about Sting, but well, let's okay. let's get the well, invasion well, well, first. Well, 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 let's get Sting. We got an cause... interpromotional battle going on okay, here. Okay. Well, well, so so. When Sting, if you remember a couple of weeks or month, whatever it was, when they all of a sudden Sting's merchandise was pulled by WWE and his contract, which was months after his contract was up. But, you know, they, the last day that they could sell the merchandise, so they pulled all Sting's merchandise. As soon as that happened, I was thinking, you know, you know why would he not resign? He's got to be going to AEW, which, in fact, he was. And so they timed this for Christmas, you know, right before Christmas, and they're just... As you could, if you look on the, they were churning out that Sting merchandise for Christmas, um, but he is signed a multi-year contract. He is going to be a regular on the television. It's not like WWE where he show up once every year or whatever. I mean, he is going to be on this thing. They wanted the idea of you know the big star from the old generation TNT being back as a regular. Obviously, they're going you know. Whatever physical stuff he does, they're going to have to do very safely. Um, you know, he, you know, if if whatever, there there will be physical stuff, but it will not be. I don't think he'll be taking any bumps or anything like that. Um, but um, but he's in. He's going to be a character, you know, in in some form. Um, you know, Sting was Cody Rhodes. You I know, mean, they talked about Cody's favorite wrestler. That was Cody's favorite wrestler was Sting. You know, when he was a, a kid. And a lot of these guys, you know, it was a big, big deal. So AEW, so the 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 callous thing has been in the works for a while. Um, and I didn't know this, but I can I I, I presume that Don Cal, you know, Don Callis came up with you know with the Omega Jericho match. I presume he came up with this idea. And Tony Khan went with it, and Omega probably wanted it. And it is going to be some sort of, you know, promotional thing. And the promotions are going to be working together to a degree, which obviously is greatly beneficial to Impact. Um, it it does open up the doors for people in, um, I mean, which is actually great for Impact, you know, to, because some of their guys are going to end up on AEW television, probably like the NWA, like like uh, R Thunder Rosa, um, with the NWA, and and you know maybe people from New Japan and AAA. I mean AEW is wanting to work with people right now, um, and and vice versa. Kenny Omega is going to Mexico. Uh, Kenny Omega is going to be on Impact on Tuesday with the first interview. He's going to do they they haven't advertised, but he will be doing an interview on Wednesday as well. I don't know that Don Callis will be with him, but I have this. I mean, I when I saw Don do the thing with Paige, it felt to me like Don is going to manage Kenny, and that will be the big thing with Kenny as champion, trying to do the Bachwinkle and Heenan thing. Um, and I cannot tell you that that's what's happening but Don Callis grew up with Bachwinkle and Heenan uh, Don Callis very much uh, you know that's that's his childhood and I feel that there is a very good chance that something like that is what is in the offing and um, you know how it's all going to work but I mean it's I saw like um, you know, it was, I, you know, I didn't even think of it on Tuesday night's impact. They aired a match with the young bucks against Saban and Shelley. I think it was like a ladder match from like 10 years ago, which was just hilarious to watch just because, you know, I mean, it's like, God, the young bucks are on impact for like no reason, but they do sometimes show old matches on impact. So it's not, it wasn't like so much of a giveaway, except it was the young bucks and it was kind of like. There's something going on here. So I don't know, like, if, uh, you know, um, like, Young Bucks against Gallows and Anderson, if you think about it. Um, I know the Young Bucks were, when when 
the Hardys were champions in Impact, and the Young Bucks were champions in Ring of Honor, they had laid out this year-long program where they would win the belts back and forth, like the Young Bucks were going to win the the Impact uh, TNA belts, and the Hardys were going to win the ROH belts, and somehow, you know, they would do a program for a year, and then, you know, everybody would wind up with their belts at the end. And then Vince offered the Hardys so much money, and they left, so the program, you know, it was that rushed program from that year. But the, the original plan before the Hardys went to work for Vince was to do that all year. So that idea is in people's minds. I'm not saying that's going to happen now. But um, Young Bucks against Gallows and Anderson, I mean, that was the idea for the angle on the very first episode of Dynamite, except that um, Gallows and Anderson signed a new contract with WWE because they were offered so much money, and they'd been probably kicking themselves in the head from about two months after they signed that contract, thinking like, what the fuck we were going to be in the angle on the first thing you know where they were going to beat down kenny omega and and the young bucks and obviously they wanted aj to be the third guy in that angle which didn't happen nate now aj i don't think he's had second thoughts um maybe he has but um but those guys did from from the beginning because they realized that they're never going to be used that well with wwe and they were going to walk in and be the top heel tag team feuding with the young bucks so it's ideas you know i mean there's talented guys there but i mean it's what a what a great move by callus um in the sense of they're going to get their guys some of their guys and the, the name of the promotion and everything on tnt which is a way way bigger thing than access i mean for impact yeah, it gives them access to some guys you know, I mean, Motor City Machine Guns and Gallows and Anderson and, I mean, Rich Swan's really good and maybe Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards is really good and Omega could be wrestling some of those guys on TV and things like that. Everything and anything is possible. Um, how it's going to go, I don't know, but, but it's all it's all possible because the sides are working together and, um, yeah, it is of great benefit, incredible benefit to um impact it, i i have no doubt that impact on tuesday will probably do its biggest rating um since they've gone on access and but the hope is is that you know it's it turns into one of those things the you know i'm presuming a promotion versus promotion feud to a degree i mean it makes sense to do a shoot thing those things work if they're done right i know that um impact is a much smaller company and and maybe the idea if it was with New Japan would be better, but well, that's it didn't happen with New Japan, and uh, we'll see. But when Tony Khan did the thing about what was that phrase he used about three weeks ago that everybody got mad about, and he brought and he doubled down on it yesterday. What was that phrase? Um, it was the uh, landscape of wrestling is changing, something to that effect. No, it wasn't no 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 like the the um. The balance of power is shifting? Is that what he said? Something like that. Yeah. So when he said it, which was, which was, this was actually the show that this was about, which is the, the, um, the return of Sting and the interpromotional thing. Um, so that's when he, when he said yesterday, it's like, it's still to come. You know, Pac was part one, but there's still more and it's going to come and you're going to see it. This is what that was. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.